welcome back to the channel and welcome back to our Camp Bedrock 2.0 build. In this video, we're going to take on the electrical system, mainly getting it all laid out and start to figure out where things are going to live. Where I'm going to begin is we're going to get some thin slit on that little bit of divot in that front panel up there. I've got another piece of plywood that we're going to mount all of our components to. Uh, and I think I'm going to use like an aluminum rail or something for the little bit of a bottom. That's what we're going to take on today before we move in the house and we transition over to actually mounting and laying out the hardware. What we're going to end up with is we've got two Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries and we're going to be able to charge from shore, charge from our alternator, or charge from solar and we're going to have 400 watts of solar on the roof at least when we finally get our cap and we get the build all done. So that's all that hardware is what's going to get mounted up there in front after we get that all insulated and done. We're taking off with that right now. Okay, so the way I think this is gonna work is, uh, you might actually be able to see there's three real small holes here. And what this was, these were for uh, some snaps that we had in here, or some rivets for the snaps uh, on a soft cap uh, in a former life here with the truck. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and open these up for a larger bolt, something around a 5 16ths to hold the plywood up here. Uh, and then it'll go down the, the variable here is I've got this piece of aluminum angle iron that I'm going to use and what I've done here is I've basically just um, cut this section out so that it meets this angled shape real well and then uh, when this goes in here and we haven't decided whether this is going to go up or not yet but basically this is going to be somewhere uh, between here and here and that's this will hold the bottom portion of the plywood as well and then that will give us uh, all this space for insulation back here behind us and throughout this entire project you're going to hear us talk a lot about insulation and that's because we're really trying to make a go for Alaska this year so we want to make sure that we're going to stay plenty warm and not have to rip through a bunch of fuel so some of this is um, thought out and some of it's kind of winging it move inside but we actually haven't done anything even though it's been several days now we're probably going to pick up and go right back outside once I'm done with this video here's all the components laid out and ready to be mounted to the board and this will go up against that just underneath the rear window of the truck bed all of the major components for charging and power usage that you see in front of you are all Victron Energy. And then we have Battleborn batteries. We've purchased everything from Battleborn, including the Victron units, the batteries and everything, with exception of the solar panels, the four 100 watt solar panels that will be on the cap, which came from Rich Solar. So, uh, and then a bunch of the wiring and ferrules and stuff we got from Amazon and every hardware store in our county. Uh, I'm going to go over the components, um, not in any specific order, but uh, first we have over here off to my right, your left, is the pure sine wave inverter. This is going to take our DC from our batteries, which will be situated here once mounted in the truck. They're just not laid out here. We're going to be able to take our 12 volts from the batteries. We're going to be running a 12 volt system, and this is a 1200 watt continuous inverter to make our AC to run our laptops and things like that that use the AC power in the truck. Um, and then on the DC side, so most of our lights are going to be LED, we've got some fans and those kind of things for our DC circuits. What's not yet on the board, and it's going to go somewhere here, is a small distri automotive distribution panel. Uh, we're supposed to get delivery of it today, but I'll either mount it here or somewhere kind of down in this real estate to where we can peel out all of those circuits. All of the DC connections are all going to be made right here at this Victron Lynx 1000. So what this does, the batteries will ultimately wire here. 
um, and then we'll be able to take our DC out. So the DC, the 12 volt DC will come out to the bottom of this inverter, we'll have AC out of the top, but also all of the devices that will charge. So in this case, we have the MPP uh, 100 slash 50 solar charger. So the 12 volts, we're actually not sure if we're gonna parallel series or panels just yet, but all of the solar charging cables will come down into this unit and then it will have an output that will come over to the links and then charge the batteries once in place. If we're not making cloudy day, we're not making good solar, we will also be able to charge with this device. This is the 121230 Orion charger. This is gonna take um, 12 volts or a little bit more actually from the alternator of the truck. So when the truck's running, we'll be able to get 30 amps out of this while it's running uh, again to the DC module back to the batteries to charge and then we have a third way of charging and that is this unit here and this is a, a 1225 12 slash 25 charger this takes shore power or 120 volts AC shore power to 25 amps DC output to charge the batteries again again I mentioned the batteries aren't in place they are going to line up here the positive and the negatives will come up here. The positive will go through an on-off switch um, that will then go to the Lynx module in here. And this is just like a, a bus bar connection. One thing not missing, on the battery itself, we have a 200 amp fuse that is a post mount fuse. So it will be really, uh, really nice on the space. Then off the negative terminal of the batteries will come through the smart shunt and then out the shunt over to the links module. So all our major 12 volts really terminates here with uh, fuse protection in this device as well. With the smart shunt, we will relocate this little um, controller somewhere in the truck. I'm probably gonna have to make something temporary until we have the cap in place and we have permanent mounting, but then we'll have this little bit of a controller here as well. So that's the bulk of it. DC coming out of, or coming into here to make my AC power. I've got DC coming in from my solar panels that will be making, uh, that this will control to charge the batteries. I have DC coming in from my alternator that this will use to charge batteries. And then I also have, if we're at a place with shore power where I can connect to shore with an AC plug. Now, when we have a connection at plug, because I only have 25 amps here, I don't want to be running everything through my batteries or through my inverter all the time. I'd like to be able to just use that shore power. So one of the things that I've gotten here is a three-way AC switch. This is good for more than enough current. What this is going to allow me to do is say, hey, source one, I want my AC to be running through my inverter. So all of the outlets that we build into the back of the truck will come through the inverter. Or when I go to two, I completely disconnect the AC from here, but I will repower all of those outlets as well as the feed line that runs this charger from a shore connection that we're actually going to make a pass through in the cap that will go out to that connection. And the great thing here is that I'm going to completely isolate and not put AC power back on the output terminals of your inverter that can actually really damage them. So by by doing this, I'm either going to be able to get AC from our inverter, we're making it on board from the batteries, or with two switches, I'm going to be bringing AC from shore and the output of the inverter is completely isolated from that AC shore power. Zero, there would be no connection whatsoever. All the DC stuff, like I said, it'll go through the circuit breaker. That's pretty much the rundown of the components. When it comes to mounting to the plywood, we visited darn near every hardware, um, hardware store in the county and we're gonna be using a lot of different mounts. It's interesting to me that this device is really the most, the, uh, the heaviest device on the board, the, um, the inverter, and it uses about a 1032 or an M5 hole to mount it. So we've got these little um, three pronged pass throughs. So I'm gonna drill pilot holes and then pass these through the bottom. So this would literally, you'd have to pull through a half inch piece of plywood for that to be any problem. And then some of the other devices are just, I'm just gonna use um, some thread in, Allen head thread into the plywood things. For some of these lighter devices, we'll just be able to use these. And the idea here is I don't wanna use wood screws or anything in this plywood. I want these devices, once I have them mounted, for me to be able to take them on and off and have good solid threads there. So that's one of the reasons I wanna do that uh, with this. I think for now that pretty well covers it. I'll go over everything again when I'm hooking up the individual devices, but um, I think that's it. 
Let's get back outside and get to work. Okay, we need to get you caught up a little bit. As you can see, the board is now installed into the truck and looks a good bit different. When we left off in the time lapse, I was inserting all of the inserts into this plywood for us to mount the device into. That way we had some good metal threads that we could reuse time and time again. Those insert installations went very, very well with exception of the small brass or 832 threads and those are used on the battery disconnect switch I'm pointing to where they're going to go um, the shunt and also the distribution box for all of the DC breakout they are like a screwdriver type mount I know there's an insertion tool that I didn't have I tried to use a screwdriver and when they got right to the very end the little tangs would break off. Luckily, I was able to just sort of sand the tops off. There's still gobs of threads in the wood, so I'm not worried about it in the least bit, but uh, I would recommend that if you're using the screwdriver type inserters that you get the correct installation tool um, rather than just trying to do what I did. The Allen head insert ones and then the ones that were three prong uh, hammer in from the back, they went just fine. We don't yet have the distribution box breakout, so Alana looked up the instructions and we uh, downloaded and made this little template. We are hoping that matches up when that device finally arrives, but we really wanted to get all that done so we could get this mounted and move on with some other projects. As far as securing the board, uh, I had talked about the three bolts along the, um, along the top and that I would be adding another bolt uh, on both sides. That is now complete. In addition to that, we've added this aluminum piece, not what we had talked about. We had talked about putting it on the back. We decided to go ahead and sandwich it and make a groove along that back panel and let this board sit directly on it. So this angle iron is screwed to the wood floor. That locates the floor well and then also holds that bottom in all the way. Uh, and then we replicated that on the top. The advantage to the top is it gives us a little bit more of a distribution. This is a pretty thin piece of sheet metal up here and there was a little bit of flex. So this has added a tremendous amount of rigidity, one, but then two, it has also enabled us a place to set a shelf or build off of this. Uh, we intend to put a 14 to 16 inch bench back here um, when we actually go to finish building out the interior. And this will give us a really nice place to make, uh, to make those attachments without putting any load onto this. Now that's a lot of words, it's time to get to work. Here we go. We decided to bolt everything up, make sure it all fits, and sort of see the fit and layout. And that is where we have decided to wrap up this video. We are wiring ready. In a future video, we're gonna get the batteries bolted down and secured to the floor. We've got some insulation and some heating pads so that we're better prepared for cold climates. And then we're gonna start laying out and getting all these things ready and working in a future video. I think our next video though, may be moving into the interior and doing some wiring and some other things. We look forward to seeing you then. If you've got questions about anything we're doing, please hit us in the comments or somewhere else on social media. We love hearing from you. Thanks, bye-bye.